My name is Landon Zabsik. I'm the Chief Software Architect at Spectrum Systems and today doing a webinar on our newest software product, uh, Radaview. Um, Radaview is a software solution designed specifically for stack testing and stack testers. Uh, so in this presentation today, I'm kind of going to go through that, what it is, um, how it can help you as a stack tester, um, and what some of the advantages uh, of it might be are, and then I'll do kind of a demo uh, of it a little bit later uh, as well. Um, if you have any questions, this is my first time using the webinar format, but I believe there's a way to submit those via the webinar, and then at the end of the presentation, uh, I'll circle back around. I'll be able to get those answered for you. Uh, my email address is also on here, landon at spectrumsystems.com. Uh, if you have any offline questions you want to send me, feel free to send those uh, to myself or pretty much anyone um, at ESC or Spectrum. And we'll, if we can't help you, uh, we'll definitely get you pointed in, in the right direction. So, okay. So first off, uh, why Radaview? I wanted to kind of give a little background on how Radaview came about and why kind of we decided to develop that. Um, for those of you that don't know, Spectrum has been doing stack testing for a while now. I'd say over 20 years, we do have our own stack testing department, uh, stack testing trailers, and we go around from site to site helping people uh, meet their stack testing needs. So we do have an in-house uh, testing department. Uh, they had a software solution, uh, custom software solution to help them with this. It was written, no, I guess, back in the 90s. Um, so. Uh, it just got a little aged, uh, a little difficult to maintain and install uh, things like that and just was not able to be kept up anymore uh, as all software can kind of do over time. Um, so they needed something essentially to help them uh, perform their testing tasks uh, easily um, and get those done. And so um, that's kind of how the idea of Radaview came about. Uh, basically needed, we wanted uh, some software that could really help in six main areas. Uh, we wanted to be able to control the I.O., obviously, uh, collect the data. Uh, we wanted to be able to guide the user and tester, uh, meaning something that's kind of easy to use and a little bit intuitive. Uh, store the results, perform the calculations, and handle the reporting uh, of RADA tests. So those were the main uh, goals we had. Uh, we really wanted all areas of the functionality to be designed specifically for stack testing and not just generic. Um, I know there are some generic solutions out there and you can uh, probably get by with a generic uh, PLC and then doing it kind of yourself. But we wanted to be a little smarter than that, uh, kind of help the user um, save them some time. So that's why we specifically designed it uh, for stack testing. We worked uh, really close with our stack testing department, um, myself and uh, mainly Andrew Hatcher, who's our primary developer uh, for this product, uh, worked really closely with our stack testing team and drawing on their user experience and seeing exactly what uh, they would want in this product. A little bit about RataView. Basically, its, it's overall design is to help stack testers perform Rata tests. Uh, again, designed by stack testers for stack testers specifically for performing Rata tests. Um, it is uh, packaged and sold uh, as a subscription-based model with an 8864 data controller. Uh, I'll get into that uh, a little bit later, um, but it is uh, a perpetual license that you can you can purchase, I guess an annual license. Um, so there's not a huge upfront cost getting started with Radaview, and you do get all the support that comes with Radaview and the support with the 8864 data controller, uh, which is a really popular, I think the, the most used uh, data controller in, in, in that uh, field. Uh, basically it's, uh, to help with faster testing and reporting. Uh, there are templates and customizable reports you can use to kind of save time, uh, cut down some of that testing time and some of that repetitive work uh, when you're going to the same site every quarter, or every year to test over and over again. Um, it is backed by a 24 seven customer support team. One of the advantages of having a DAS vendor uh, build and uh, ship a product like this is that we obviously have a 24 seven customer support team for our 8864. Um, and for our DAS products, uh, so Radaview falls into that. Uh, Radaview is also actively developed product. It's, it's our newest product, uh, so it's got the latest and greatest technology in it, and it is built on our SpectreView Prism DAS platform, uh, which is obviously actively maintained and updated. That's also a newer product as well, about four to five years old, um, and that's installed on, on quite a few DASs 
out there throughout the country. So um, it's built on top of that. So you have that that functionality and those those updates as well. It's not something uh, we're just going to let kind of fall by the wayside. We'll, we do um, updates and support for it pretty regularly. What is RataView itself, the actual technology and software solution? What, what does it consist of? Um, it's basically a Windows server and an 8864 data logger controller, um, as I said earlier. So those are the two main pieces um, that, that go along with RataView. Um, there are a few RataView software services that are installed on that Windows server. Um, it's typically a rack mount server uh, that will put um, you know, next to your analyzers in your rack or whatever. Um, uh, but that's customizable based on based on what you need. Uh, also on that server is a SQL Express database. Uh, we install and configure that on the server for you as well. Um, another, the third piece of that uh, is the RataView Windows client application, uh, which that's what you launch and you will interact with and use to actually run your tests, capture the results, um, save those, uh, things like that. It provides your interaction uh, to the RataView system. And the fourth piece of it is the MS Excel spreadsheets uh, that are used for the results uh, calculation uh, and reporting in Excel format. Um, we asked a lot of our customers and our stack testing group what their preferred uh, method of reporting was, and they all came back with, with Excel. They use it in some form or another, whether it's the, the end reporting result or an intermediate uh, in order to get to the end result. Um, but that was kind of something that they all had in common. Uh, that they like to use uh, for reporting uh, of RATA tests. So that's the, that's the format we went with for reporting. Uh, what does RATAView do? It basically simplifies regulatory compliance, helps you to automate RATA testing, saving time and preventing errors. It does allow you to troubleshoot and resolve problems, and it does speed up reporting time using our reporting templates and the Excel spreadsheets uh, that are automatically generated. So that's pretty much what RataView consists of and what it is. I wanted to take a second to go into the control flow of the signals and uh, how those kind of work with the RataView system. Um, you can see on the right um, the, the signals basically start at the analyzers uh, obviously as they're measuring um, you know emissions data it comes from the analyzers uh, down to the 8864. Uh, those are typically hardwired to the 8864, so you'll have an 8864 in your existing analyzer rack that we hardwire with 4 to 20 um, and some digitals and things like that. But we can also do Modbus uh, from the analyzers to the 8864 as well uh, if you don't want it hardwired. Uh, then going down below the 8864, so the 8864 takes those signals in, um, and then the uh, actual RataView server, which is typically a rack mount server, um, you know, maybe in the rack right next to the AA64. Uh, that server is running, again, our RataView services in the background and constantly communicating uh, with that 8864. Uh, it's doing three main methods of communication. Uh, the data sampling, where it takes those 10 second averages that the 8864 makes for us and taking those and storing those in the database permanently. Um, and then it reads the real-time data every three to five seconds. Uh, that's kind of a faster read uh, to help with the user interface, the actual application, so that you can see the numbers uh, changing more rapidly on the screen. Um, and then also any kind of sets, any writes down to the device, um, the server uh, will handle that and send that to the 8864 as well. And then the very bottom piece uh, in this graphic here, it's shown on a laptop, but uh, it can also be run on the server itself if you want, is the RataView client, uh, which is the client Windows application. I'll demo a little later. Um, and that communicates with the RataView server only. It doesn't uh, communicate directly with any devices or um, any analyzers or anything like that. Um, all the data we retrieve from the 8864 is stored on the SQL Server database for retrieval. Uh, so any tests that you run are essentially stored uh, forever in that database, and you can go back and retrieve those um, at any time. Uh, we can also, rather, you can also communicate directly with Modbus devices in addition to the 8864. Uh, so there's some flexibility there, uh, depending on your uh, analyzers and devices you're using. So that's kind of the control flow of, of the analog signals and how they get into RataView. 
And then this slide kind of shows a little bit about the client program, which you can see a screenshot here on the right of, um, and the workflow uh, and kind of the process that goes into that. So there's four main areas of, of functionality in the client program. Uh, the first is configuration. Um, obviously, you need to be able to uh, change some things, configure some things. So there is a configuration uh, type menu area uh, in the application. Uh, RataView systems, typically Spectrum ESC, will uh, configure those for you ahead of time uh, with your needs, uh, your analyzers, um, your test trailer, uh, whatever you need. We'll, we'll get that configured and set up for you. But there is a place in the client application where you can go um, and adjust things and edit things, reconfigure as needed. Um, this includes calibration gas bottles. Uh, obviously, you need to add and remove those uh, as the bottles come in and out. Uh, you can change things on the analyzers, scaling, uh, move them around, and your uh, input output points coming into the 8864, there is the ability um, in this configuration screen to change those. You can change the scaling on those, you can move those around, uh, things like that. So things you may need to update uh, in the field uh, can be done on that screen. The second part of functionality uh, is the build test. Um, so the way RataView works is we, we try to build a, a test for you, uh, which consists of a lot of steps, uh, whether those steps are runs or QA uh, events or um, bias and drift or whatever those steps in the test may be. Uh, the application tries to show you essentially a queue from top to bottom of what you have set up for the entire test, and then it kind of runs down, you know, executing each one of those steps and you can clearly see uh, when a step is finished and then what step it's going to go on to next. Uh, so that's kind of the thought process uh, that went into it. You basically build this um, entire queue or, or test and then you can start executing it at any time and you can see it kind of go down easily where it is in the test, what it's done so far, uh, what's next, uh, things like that. And for the actual running of the test, uh, all the real-time results are displayed uh, on the screen. Uh, there is an automatic or manual mode. Uh, there are different views you can see. Uh, we do have a one-minute run view versus a regular test view, test in progress view. Uh, so there are some different things you can kind of play with, which, which kind of help um, distinguishing where you are in the test and, and what may be coming next, uh, things you may need to pay attention to, uh, things like that. Uh, the last area of functionality is reporting um, and again that's the excel reporting uh, engine uh, we'll provide you with those excel spreadsheets and basically uh, you'll basically open up those type in the test id of the test you just ran and hit um, uh, get data or populate data and it goes out to the sql server database automatically pulls all that data in for that test and populates each one of the spreadsheet each one of the, the tabs in the spreadsheet uh, with that data. Uh, all the calculations are done um, and if the spreadsheet is set up exactly how you need it, you're essentially done uh, once you get the, the data from the, the actual DAS and put it in the spreadsheet as well, then you're essentially done and you can uh, um, export that, save it off, um, you know, PDF it, uh, whatever you need to give it to the customer um, and you have your results right there. Some of the advantages uh, in the testing process is your ability to configure a test queue and then automate the testing process from there. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can build the queue with the different steps that are needed. And if you wanted to, you could essentially run it in automatic mode um, and the, uh, the test would essentially run itself as it went down through the different steps. Um, once you've built and run a test, you can reuse that test at any time in automatic or manual mode. Um, so we don't really have the concept of creating a test template. It's rather, okay, I've done a RATA test at this site before. That test is stored in the database. Let me just reuse that test as a template. Um, so there's no separate template configuration or anything. Uh, whatever test you run, that test is saved forever, and you have the ability to rerun that same exact configuration at any time. Um, you can also reset a test to clear out results and start over. Uh, you can do that to any, uh, essentially any step in the test. Um, you can pause the test, start, 
stop, reset, uh, whatever's needed uh, in the middle of the test. Uh, and basically we designed it this way to aid and help uh, a user that already knows uh, a little bit about stack testing in the testing process. So um, this is not really designed for someone who's never done any stack testing before, uh, but it's someone who has done some stack testing before and is familiar with the rules and the steps needed uh, in a stack test. Um, and this will kind of um, help them along the way to build the test uh, and to do what they need to do. Some design concerns we tried to stick to uh, when building this software. Uh, well, the number one rule we tried to stick to was to make sure this was stable, reliable, and designed to avoid failure. Um, the last thing you need is to get out uh, to a remote site. Uh, maybe you don't have internet or even cell phone reception. You're out at a plant. Um, you know, the plant is making special accommodations for you to run the RATA test, and your software is crashed or screwed up, and you can't get it to work. Um, so that's the number one thing uh, we try to design for. Um, it needs to work and work every time and be reliable for you. Uh, the next was to be able to stop, pause, and resume uh, during a test. Uh, so this is a lot different than some of our other um, SIMS and DAS related uh, products like a linearity or something like that. Uh, this needs to be extremely flexible. You need to be able to stop in the middle of a test in case something goes wrong, uh, something needs to be reset, uh, there's a hiccup at the plant, something like that. You need to be able to reset and go back to the beginning of the test or the beginning of a step. Uh, and then resume essentially on the fly. Uh, kind of dovetails into the next one, flexibility while testing, uh, rerun. Uh, the test is saved at each step. Um, so if something uh, happens or you exit out or have to close out or whatever, the test is saved at where you left off. You can pull up the application and hit continue test and it will continue on at right where you were uh, last saved. Um, we do attempt to guide actions, um, so uh, you know uh, we know that a QA event needs to be done before the bias and drift event can be done, before the runs can be done, uh, but there are overrides that are available, uh, so if uh, you have a special circumstance or something like that, uh, you are able to manually override uh, some of those things, but uh, generally the application uh, will guide you in the right direction, uh, which helps prevent uh, errors or uh, mistakes. Again, all data is saved and stored to the uh, SQL Server Express database, uh, which is a reliable database that um, everything is stored to essentially permanently uh, so we can recall those results uh, or tests at any time. And it is flexible to work with a range of I.O. devices. Um, the 8864 mm -hmm. obviously communicate with a variety of analyzers uh, at the same time, and uh, RATAB is flexible enough to accommodate um, pretty much any of those. Um, so here's a little bit about the uh, reporting. Uh, here's an example screenshot uh, of the spreadsheet, one of the spreadsheets we use uh, over here to the right. Um, and you'll see under the data worksheet, uh, basically the first row there uh, says test ID, and that's where you'll put in your RataView test identifier, whatever number that is, the uh, RataView application tells you. And then there's a button that says uh, update results or get results. You click that, it goes out to the SQL Server database, pulls all that information in into the spreadsheet, all the calculations are run, and essentially everything's there um, and ready to report. And once your spreadsheets are, are set up the way you need them to, it really um, should save, save a lot of time as far as reporting goes, uh, having it automatically go out, retrieve, and pull all that data. Uh, in for you. It does handle uh, everything you should need um, from your Cal error, your bias reports, um, all the way to even uh, getting the ECMPS data uh, generated for you as well. So this is kind of a little bit of what I just talked about. It's imported from, from the database into the spreadsheet. Uh, one thing you can do is for each test or each site you go to, put in the test identifier, pull the results in, results in, uh, do the calculations, and then save that a copy of that spreadsheet off into a folder so it's archived, uh, and that can be handed off to the customer. Uh, you know, you have a copy of that uh, kind of saved forever um, is typically how, how we do it. Uh, RataView does uh, have some options to troubleshoot and resolve problems. 
so as we all know, out there in the field, you can run into any kind of issues uh, from I.O. issues um, to moving things around to a uh, different setup at the site than you expected. Uh, so there are some areas in RataView where I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, you can go to kind of accommodate that. Uh, if you're having some uh, I.O. issues or some communication issues, there are act places in the program you can go to uh, visually see what's going on and, and potentially troubleshoot uh, those kind of issues. So that is it for the slideshow. Uh, give me one second and I will see if I can share the demo. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you can see this. Uh, what this is is a um, actual virtual machine uh, running on VMware. Um, it's a demo demonstration of what a RataView server machine might be. Uh, this particular one is running Windows Server 2012 uh, with SQL Server. Um, it's maybe a little less powerful uh, than a normal RataView server since this is just a virtual machine. Um, it's not connected to any real devices or probes or anything like that, but it is a good enough setup for a demonstration uh, type environment. So uh, you can pretend like this is the, the actual server uh, that you'll be connecting to, and we have RataView installed on this server, and you'll have a little icon to be able to open it up and click it up. So I'll just double click on that, and you see it booting up there. Um, and this is the actual client application. You may be running this from the server. Uh, or from a, a laptop uh, over the network uh, connecting to the actual server. Um, so here we're opening it on the server. I've got it open here. This is the default home screen. I'll just give you a little uh, tour of what this screen looks like for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, down at the bottom here we have the user that is logged in to this account. This takes your uh, Windows identity, the computer you're logged into, whatever username you logged in as and automatically uh, uses that to log you in for security reasons. Um, you can see the SIMS actual date and time of the server here. Uh, so this is the actual, you can see our actual server time is 1125, but because of daylight savings time, it's 1025. So this will take whatever time the actual server is, even if you're running this from another computer. Uh, this main screen here uh, has your last test results listed here in this grid uh, from newest to oldest. So the last ones we just did, they're all test, 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 because this is a demo system. Um, you can see when we started and completed them, uh, these actually have not yet been started. They don't have a started date, uh, but I just created those today, it looks like. Um, and you can see these past tests that have not yet been completed do have a continue test button. Uh, so we could click on that. Uh, if we had to go to lunch and close down the entire computer or Microsoft decided to do some Windows updates or something like that and rebooted the computer out from under us, we could open this back up, uh, come in here and click continue test and it would reload everything to the very last point that it saved. Uh, if you have some errant tests in here, you can also delete those. Um, you can also view uh, the finished tests here uh, as well. We have some uh, ones that were actually completed down here at the bottom. Um, up at the top in the title bar, uh, you'll see a settings option. If you click on that, uh, there's a little fly out here. This gives you some settings or some information about uh, your system. So you'll see uh, kind of the name of the setup. Uh, you'll see a serial number and a license key. Uh, you may need that license key in order to update your, your annual license. Uh, we do give you a warning 30 days in advance uh, that says, hey, this license is about to expire. What do you want to update now? Uh, you can call our phone numbers right here, help desk link, all that. Call, get a new license key, put it in, uh, and you'll be good to go. Um, I thought I'll start with the configuration menu a little bit. So to go in the configuration side of thing, which you'll probably want to do before running a RATA test, uh, just to make sure all your bottles are set up correctly, all your instruments are on the right I.O., they're reading correctly, you'll probably want to just double check your configuration either before you head out to the site or right before uh, you start a new test. So there's four main tabs here, the bottle manager tab at first. Um, there's two main panes. There's an active bottle inventory and an inactive bottle inventory. Um, so you can choose which bottles are active and inactive. Um, you can drag an inactive one up uh, to the active bottle inventory if you want. 
Uh, it's just kind of a way to filter which bottles you have on hand that day, uh, which bottles you're going to want in your drop down selection boxes uh, to be used uh, for the test you're running that particular day. You can also <clears throat> retire these bottles if you need to. Click on it, hit the retire link. Uh, that'll essentially delete those. You can edit them right here as well. Uh, if you have a USB bottle scanner, you can hit the scan button and just scan the certificate and it'll put the bottle uh, directly uh, in here for you. Um, the ad, I won't go through this whole thing. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of the uh, data entry in here is designed to be guided and kind of give you a wizard uh, way of stepping through uh, the required data. Uh, so it's pretty, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, basically, you just need to fill things out. Uh, add the serial number for the bottle, uh, certification date, expiration. Did something wrong here. And you can add your concentrations here. Uh, the different concentrations this particular bottle may have. I won't actually do that, but if you hit finish, it would actually add it uh, to the inventory there um, and you'd be able to use it. So that's essentially the bottle manager. If you click on any one of these, you'll notice in the right hand side, you can see all the detail about that bottle. Uh, you can hit edit. Uh, one of the handy things to do is to give these bottles uh, a handy name uh, that's easily recognizable uh, by you so that when you're running a test, it's easy to see you know, which bottle uh, you should be using for that particular QA event. Uh, calculations. Uh, this tab allows you to set up additional calculations in the system. Uh, the ones that are typically used uh, for the analyzers that you have configured for your system uh, will already be set up by us upon installation. But you do have the ability to add your own here if you need to. Uh, for instance, we have uh, NOx rate, SOT rate, uh, CO corrected, things like that already set up here. You could add additional new ones. And again, it's a wizard uh, that kind of steps you through how to add those. Pick from our predefined list of formulas here. Uh, this is stored with the system. Uh, these are uh, EPA type formulas uh, that are not, not allowed to be edited. Those are stored that our calculation engine uses. It runs uh, pulls in the parameters, runs them through that formula, uh, and then spits out the result. So uh, you could choose that here. Specify your things. And then you see the formula we've chosen, and we can specify the different parameters for those. So um, these are the tags that are in the system, which tags you can think of as the different um, points coming into the system, whether it's analogs or digitals, uh, things like that. And those will all be set up. I'll show you uh, on another page where those actually exist. This particular system has an A bank and a B bank of analyzers. I think one is uh, an extractive bank of analyzers and the other is a dilution. Um, so that's where you see those. Uh, so you can uh, kind of select what goes into each one of those. So for instance, the A parameter is O2. The B parameter is CO2 and so forth. That's not that's not right, but you could change it to whatever you need. And then hit finish, and that would add that actual calculation to the system. And then you would be able to re recall that and display that uh, on the test screen uh, when you're running a test. Uh, the instruments. So here's the instruments we have uh, that are configured uh, for this system. You can see the A bank and the B uh, bank of analyzers here. Uh, the gas type that they measure, the IO channel they're on, and their actual span value. Um, and you can edit each one of these uh, if you need to by clicking on it, click edit, you can change the gas type. Uh, so if you needed to switch for some reason uh, your O2 analyzer with your CO2 analyzer, you could do that here. Uh, you could change the input channel those come in on. Uh, so these are all the actual input channels coming into the system. You can see we have a couple spares here. So we could move this one over to the spare. Uh, if we blew a channel where the O2 is currently located, uh, we can move the wires over like that. Uh, we could also change the span value as well. 
Last page in the configuration uh, is the raw points. Um, so this shows you the actual I.O. on the 8864. Uh, this is a demo system, so it's not actually communicating uh, with an 8864, but rather with an in-memory uh, type setup. So uh, it's a little bit different, but this is what essentially what you would see. Your analog inputs up here at the top and then your digital outputs here at the bottom. So um, you can see with each analog input, the number or the address channel it's on. Uh, so one, this will be one, two, three, all the way up to however many analog slots you have. You can see we've got a couple spares in here uh, as well. Um, you can see their range, what their range for zero to 100. Uh, if something is on there, you can see the actual uh, value and, and the unit of measure. So this is in percentage, uh, this one's in PPM. Uh, things like that. Uh, you can also edit the point scaling. So uh, if you're, you've are you moved analyzers over and one was uh, scaled one way and the, the, the new analyzer you moved over scaled differently, you can change that here as well. Uh, these I believe I can just click and drag um, since this is not um, a real system and it'll actually change the numbers. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you can see your digital outputs, uh, which are typically going to your gas solenoids to turn on and off your cow gases. Uh, you can see from the gray color that they're essentially all off right now. Uh, if you want to troubleshoot some of those, you certainly could. You can manually toggle them from here, um, and it should turn them on and off, although I don't know. Yeah, okay, so this one does work. And you can see this is what they look like when they're actually turned on. Uh, the colors filled in there, that actual... Uh, digital uh, is energized and, and turned on. Turn that one off. So that's the configuration. So once you kind of touched base there, uh, got all your bottles set up, uh, made sure uh, all the I.O. is correct for the site you're going to, uh, you could then uh, start a new test. Uh, so from the main screen, it's just the main button, new reference method. And you'll see there's two different tabs here. Uh, the first one that's automatically selected is create new. Uh, so you can create an entirely new, uh, empty, essentially rata tests from scratch. Um, is what you would do, and then you would just build uh, that test up manually uh, with all the different steps that go into that or you can create from previous. Uh, let's just show you what you would do for creating a new one. So here's all of our instruments. We saw those uh, on the other page, the configuration instruments page. Uh, so when you're creating a new RATA test, you needs to know which instruments you wanna use in this test. You would select all those, a name or a description for the test, whether or not it's extractive or dilution, and then hit start test. Uh, and that would take you to uh, the test now running screen. I'm going to do create from previous. Uh, and this is where you essentially, uh, if you're going back to the same site next year or uh, a similar site that has um, the exact same type of steps and configuration that you want to use, it's basically starting from a, a template or a previous test. Uh, so I'll just select a past test here. Uh, just one of these, give it a name, hit start test. It's going to load all those steps and all that data from that past test and go ahead and build the new test for us. Um, so this is what the main test running screen looks like. This is the default screen of it. Um, you can see over here on the left are our instruments that are used in this test. So apparently this was an O2 and a NOx test. Um, and it does give you the test identifier up here, which is 59. Um, that's what we're going to use uh, when we report it. We'll put that into the spreadsheet um, and it'll pull uh, the essentially the data out for that particular test. At this point, we haven't done anything. We could hit the back and it won't, uh, won't really save anything. Uh, nothing's been done yet. The test hasn't been started. Um, you can see over here on the right, these bottles are uh, flashing for your attention. These need to be filled out essentially before you're able to start the test. So uh, 
The one thing we can't populate uh, from a template uh, is which bottles are being used for, um, you know, which calibration events. Um, it may be that you have entirely different bottles now than the last time you ran this test. Uh, so we do have all the steps and all that information in there, their duration, what they do, uh, but we don't know which bottles uh, you want to use for everything. So we ask you that again. Um, that's where you can hit the Assign Bottles tab. And every step that needs a bottle assigned to it will be in this drop down. Click on it, hit next, and find the bottle. These are the bottles uh, from that bottle list I showed you earlier on the configuration screen uh, from the active list. Uh, those show up here. Uh, this is the name that you can give them, uh, their serial number, uh, and everything there. So I'll just assign a zero bottle to that one. I'll just go through these really quick, assigning these to something. see no too high and then once these are assigned um, you'll just add a response time and you should be ready to start that's high And you can see the list is getting of available options is getting smaller and smaller as we fill out the assign the bottles to the different QA events that are already in this test. And then I'll just do zero for that. Okay, now all the bottles have been assigned to the existing QA events that are in this test, uh, which are these here bias and drift events as well. So those have all been assigned. We do need to fill out a response time. This is required for reporting and it is in seconds. So we'll do 30 seconds. Uh, and it warns you that that's less than the recommended 60 seconds. Yes, I'm just doing that for demo purposes. So now essentially our test is, is ready to go. Uh, if we hit click start here, it would start with the first uh, event here and it would start running that and you can see it kind of go through uh, each one, one by one. Uh, this is the test queue that I was talking about. That's essentially a queue of different steps that go into the test. Um, what you can do is you can delete, you can move up and down, you can edit, you can see what's going on. I'll just hit view step actions. So this tells you what's actually going on in this step. Uh, here we're turning the zero A on, the in Cal A and the direct Cal A bits on uh, for 300 seconds. So uh, you can see what's going on in each one of those steps. Um, I think you can even edit the step actions. You can take steps out. You can add different uh, uh, bits that go on in that step to it. You can obviously adjust the time if you wanted to as well. Um, you can delete them. You can move them up and down, uh, whatever you need to do. We tried to provide that flexibility to prevent you from getting, uh, you know, sort of a way through the test and then being forced into, you know, something that wasn't what needed to be done. So there is some flexibility uh, to kind of reset and move things around uh, if you need to. I'll go ahead and click start here. I'm not 100% sure this will work great because this is a demo system, uh, but you can see the screen kind of changed and now we do have a current run uh, that popped up here telling us where we are in our current run. Our start time is filled in here. So we're running these two. We're running the O2 zero and the NOx A zero. These are our expected values. And this is what step number we're at. Um, this is how long uh, this has elapsed, and we can, of course, adjust this timer on the fly of how long this whole thing will last. I'll just bring it down here to 40 seconds, measured in values here. This is a demo system, so none of this is changing, uh, but if we were actually flowing cow gas bottles, you would have saw that change. Uh, it did pass because it was expecting zero, and we were at zero, uh, so that's good. So we passed our zero, 
And then you can see it pop, uh, just stopped and waited for us uh, to go to the next one. Uh, we can hit resume to do that. We can switch to automatic mode. In that case, uh, it'll just keep on going through those tests if you want to. I'll hit resume. Now it's running just the O2A high. It's expecting 20%. And right now we're at zero. Uh, I could make this pass if I wanted to, uh, but I don't think I will. So uh, if at any point um, you're happy with the numbers that are in there uh, and you're good to go, you can hit accept values. Uh, that'll accept whatever the value is currently, which is uh, still zero flat line. But you could hit that and that would end the step right there. Uh, and accept that value uh, and go on. Again, we can adjust the time as needed, things like that. I'll just hit accept value and you can see it turn red uh, because we failed that one. What we could do is hit reset and now we're able to run that one again uh, if we had some sort of problem with that. Um, so that's the basic idea of the test now running. We tried to make it uh, guided and easy to use uh, yet flexible. Uh, to prevent um, any kind of wasted time or errors from happening. Um, so that's pretty much um, how that is laid out and how that works. Uh, I won't go through an entire test. We don't have time for that today. Um, but that, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how that works. So let's look up. I'll show you the reporting briefly, and then we should have some time for some questions. Uh, and you can see it did save it in here because we started at test ID 59. This is what I named it, um, so we could look that up here. So this is an example of the Excel spreadsheet that's used for the reporting of these tests. Um, and basically just open it up, and then on the main page, uh, this is the main first page that it'll go to. Uh, here's where you put in your test identifier. Um, you can put in whatever we wanted to. 59 here, and you can see that it's updating. We'll go to the one minute. We didn't do any one minute data. We didn't really run this test, so this is not a great example. Uh, but you can see our instruments here. These are the runs that we created. We didn't run any of them, so it's all blank. Um, and you can see uh, we did run some 10 second data. Uh, but these tabs here uh, are adjustable. Uh, these are our basic tabs that we'll set up for a new system. Um, so uh, it gives you kind of these reports. Should be everything uh, you need to report to a customer, as well as um, the XML uh, data can be generated. Just by clicking on this tab, you can generate that and then import that into the ECMPS client tool uh, or the DAS, uh, vendor's DAS if you need to as well. So. And then once you've got all the results pulled in here and everything how you want, just save it off as uh, whatever you want to a new folder. Uh, and you've got a, a record uh, of that, that RATA test that was run. So, All right, I think that's pretty much everything I had. Um, I don't know if there's anyone that has any, any questions or, or anything about anything. I guess I'll... Um, See if there's anyone that has any questions. Hi, Landon. I don't see any questions um, except for a couple of people have asked if this presentation will be available uh, after the webinar, and it will. Uh, just give us a couple of days to edit it, and we will send it out to everybody, and we will also be posting it to our YouTube channel. Okay, good deal. All right, well, if there's no questions, thank you everybody for your time. And um, if you have any questions later or think of anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of us and we're glad to help you out. Thanks everybody.